Hello again. So in this video, I'm going to summarize the second section of the textbook, 1.2, the cosine and the sine, always emphasizing that these summaries are um, intended to be supplemental and not to replace reading the textbook. But, uh, Pen this time, so hopefully my handwriting will be a little easier to take. Okay, sad update. The pen I was provided with doesn't actually write, write on, uh, on this computer, so my finger it is. In this uh, section, we are going to introduce two very important functions called the cosine and the sine. And for now, you are probably going to have to take my word for it that these functions um, genuinely are important. It will be, I think, the next chapter really, when we uh, start looking at the graphs of these things, that we really see what we want them for. Um, for now, I'll, I'll simply define them. Um, the cosine and the sine come directly from the wrapping function of the previous section. So that's Remind ourselves real quick, we have the Cartesian plane, we have the unit circle, so a circle of radius one centered around the origin, and we have this wrapping function. And what this wrapping function does is if you apply it to a number, say you apply it to one, then starting here, we travel with that many units, we travel with that distance. In this case, we travel a distance of one, either clockwise or counterclockwise, in this case, counterclockwise, because the one is positive, and we wind up on the unit circle, and sorry about that, trying to move some menus. The, uh, the place we wind up, it's a point, x comma y, in this particular case. We wind up at the point um at the point point five four comma point eight four, so this wrapping function here it was takes a point as its input, takes a number as its input. I should say. and gives us a point back again. And the cosine and the sine are just taking this wrapping function and breaking it into two. So we've got this function that sends one to these two numbers to this point. The coordinate is called the cosine and the y coordinate is called the sine. And um, what I wrote, cosine one, sine one, that's not the standard way to write this. Um, these are abbreviated as cos and sin. 
the cos of one, the cosine of one is point five four. The sine of one, the sin of one, as it were, is a uh, point eight four. So another example, let's try to find the cosine of pi. Let's just think this through. Um, most cosines and sines you won't be able to find in your head. You'd have to use a calculator. But pi is a special. Here's the unit circle. The unit circle has a circumference of 2 pi. So pi is half of the unit circle. Pi is starting here. and ending up here. And um, bearing in mind that this is the unit circle, so that is a distance of one. This point we wind up is the, at is the point negative one comma zero. So the cosine of pi is the x coordinate. The cosine of pi is negative one. And the sine of pi is the y coordinate. The sine of pi is zero. So You've got your unit circle. You travel, let's say, C units around the unit circle. You wind up at the cosine of C, comma, the sign of C. And that's the definition of the cosine and the sine. And again, these uh, video summaries are not intended to be comprehensive. There's um, some important stuff that we haven't touched on in this summary. Like we haven't talked about the ranges of the cosine and sine. Um, that's in the textbook. And again, you are expected to, to read the textbook as part of this class. But the absolutely most important part of this section is the material we've gone over in this video. The definition of the cosine and the definition of the sine. And having presented these definitions, we are going to be using them for the rest of the course. I mean, you could say that trigonometry is the study of the cosine and the sine functions. So this is, this is really a important material for you to, to master.